Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a long overdue video for you and this is a huge perfume PR haul. So I'm going to be sharing with you some of the perfumes that have been sent to me over the last couple of weeks to six months. Some of them are long overdue. I should have talked about them a long time ago but better late than never. So there are some incredible scents in here and there are some that I'm willing to bet you haven't heard of before that are definitely worth checking out. And then there are a couple that sort of fell a little bit flat for me. So if you want to see what those are then and definitely stay tuned and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfume so if that is your cup of tea definitely make sure to head on down and subscribe also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram and with that out of the way let's get started in today's video so today's video is going to be very chill and relaxed again um, haven't done one of these videos in a really long time to be honest this is a very on the whim video wasn't planning to do this today but I figured I would share with you a few fragrances that I did get sent to me in PR and there's about 10 of them here so it is going to take some time to go through them so I'm not going to go super super in depth with the notes if there's anything notable about it that I want to share with you I will share like one or two of the main notes or the keynotes kind of a quick overview tell you what they smell like my impression what I think they smell like and my basic thoughts overall of the perfumes by the way I do apologize for my really dirty looking cup I used this cup to drink coffee yesterday I know I'm a horrible person I don't don't always wash my coffee cups in between <laughs> in between days I just like refill it the next day and drink out of it is that terrible I don't know but I don't really care <laughs> okay so the very first one is actually one that was sent to me complimentary from twisted lily so thank you so much to them for sending this to me this video is not sponsored I don't know if it's super popular but I think it's quite well known this is from Goutel Paris and this is the petite Cherie eau de toilette what I love about this perfume the most is the packaging it is really beautiful Anique Goutel has such beautiful very classy very feminine very girly packaging really really gorgeous so it comes in like this fluted looking glass with the facets on it so this is a fruity green fragrance for the summertime it's actually a really beautiful scent you guys it has notes of pear peach and grass it also has rose hedione and lilac and in the base it has vanilla and white musk I don't get a whole lot of the vanilla in here I definitely get the white musk and it is a very fruity fragrance before I forget, I do have a discount code for you guys if you are interested in getting anything on Twisted Lily, not just this one, but any perfumes at all, Parfum de Marly, Baccarat Rouge, I do have a discount code 10% off. I will link that down below for you guys. So let me take the lid off here, the cap off. I always call it a lid. So this is actually a really interesting, beautiful scent. It's very fresh, it's very green. It does have that note of grass in the opening. It's, it's really interesting. What this smells like to me is kind of a peachy, grassy shampoo in a really nice way. Is this my cup of tea? Not really. This isn't something I think I would wear. I think though that if you like Jo Malone fragrances and if you like, I think there's a fragrance called Lila Lou. I will try to find it and put a picture of it on the screen. You can get it from Sephora, I believe. And if you like those kind of fresh, grassy scents, if you like the Hermes, Un Jardin Sur Le Nil, Un Jardin Sur La Toile, those fragrances, this is one that you probably would really like. It's very fresh, it's very grassy, it's very green. Um, it would be really good for warm summer days, really hot days. It's kind of like it's kind of like a fresh burst of shampooy freshness, but with a very strong note of grass. So you do have to not mind that whole like green grassy quality. For me, I don't particularly like this. It actually it doesn't sit very well with me, something about it. I just don't really like the way it smells. It makes me feel almost a little bit kind of sick to my stomach. Um, but I think it's just the combination of the grass with the whole shampoo-y thing and the peach. I'm also not a huge fan of peach. Peach often turns my stomach. It doesn't matter what perfume it is. It turns my stomach in one of the Burberry perfumes. It turns my stomach in Rihanna Reb Fleur. I just can't do peach, so it's not the perfume's fault. I think if peach wasn't in here, I would probably really like this one for the summertime but there's just something about it that I personally cannot do but I know that this is pretty well loved a lot of people really like this perfume and I think it is worth checking out if you like those sort of like pear grass fruity fresh summertime perfumes so so the next one in this beautiful bottle is one from Maleg perfumes and this is called cherry rose and I think this is the very cherry rose chocolate patchouli fragrance I'm not 100% sure on that um, because the one that I see online is in a different bottle this one is just it just says cherry rose so I'm not sure if this is the new packaging 
reading, but I will try to find the accurate information and a link to this and I will put it down below if you guys are interested. So Maleg Perfumes was kind enough to send this to me complimentary through PR. Of course, this whole video is a PR video. And this is actually a surprisingly very nice scent. I have to be totally honest with you guys, as I always will be. I have tried a couple of the Maleg Perfumes in the past and they were not my cup of tea. Um, his company is quite well known for using uh, real animal musks. However, he does claim that he obtains them in a ethical manner. He does use, I think, ethically sourced, ethically obtained real animal products. The other fragrances that I tried from him before were very, very woody, very heavy, very animalic. Um, just They just were not my cup of tea. I can't remember what the names were. They're very good quality. They project like crazy, but they just were not my cup of tea. This one surprises me. This one definitely was a breath of fresh air, but this is a really sweet, pretty, fruity, cherry rose scent. This actually reminds me a little bit of Sofia by Sofia Vergara, except this smells way higher quality and is way longer lasting, and it's a little bit deeper and a little bit more mature. So this actually kind of has like a distant, a distant cousin of maybe Delina, Sofia Vergara, um, maybe some Coco Mademoiselle, maybe a little bit of, mm, what else would it have in it? Let's see. It's a little bit like a Shepra kind of a fragrance. It has a sweetness to it. I definitely do smell some sort of animalic touch in here. Very potent, it's very long lasting. This is a beautiful scent. It's actually a very beautiful scent. It's very feminine, very fruity, very sweet, very elegant. It's very, very pretty and very, very elegant. And if you like um, Delina, if you like Coco Mademoiselle, if you like Sofia by Sofia Vergara, this is one that definitely would be worth checking out. I think it's a very, very nice scent and it comes in a really beautiful bottle, really classy. I didn't really like his other style of bottles. I will show you a picture. Um, personally, they just weren't my taste, although they do have a lot of artistry and they're very unique and they're very original and he does use incredible craftsmanship with his products and incredible artistry. Um, so yeah, his company is, is worth checking out, I think. And also this does come in a really neat little like handcrafted wood in box and there's like hay in the bottom it's really interesting so yeah like I said I will try to find the proper information for this and also the proper name and everything else and I will put this down below for you the next one is one that was sent to me from commodity and this is commodity moss so I think this is the newest one that they have in their collection if you guys watch my channel you know that my favorite fragrance from commodity is the commodity gold that one is the one that I think is the most special the most vibrant um, the most pretty but I was really excited to try this one so of course with the commodity fragrances you do have the opportunity to get them either in a um, personal, expressive, or bold scent profile. So this one is the expressive, which means it is for me and the many around me. So this one is supposed to project sort of within close proximity, but so that other people can smell it. Whereas the bold one is the very big projecting fills a room kind of one and the personal one is the one that kind of stays closer to your skin and this is actually a really beautiful scent I have to be perfectly honest I do not like the style of bottles I think the style of bottle almost ruins it a little bit for me because if you want an expressive fragrance they're all going to look very masculine and they're all going to be very heavy and bulky like this bottle so they're pretty but they're not the type of bottle I would really want sitting on my dresser or on a perfume tray. They're just, they just don't aesthetically do it for me. This one actually did come with a card and I really like that the commodity perfumes come with a little card and tell you a little bit about them. So the main notes that you have in here are grapefruit, bergamot, pedigreen, orange blossom, cedarwood, and oak moss. And this is actually a beautiful, beautiful scent, you guys. This is also kind of a very green scent, but in comparison to the Petite Cherie, it's a lot fresher, it's a little bit more masculine, and it doesn't smell like grass. This is also definitely very masculine. I think these are meant to be unisex, but personally, I would rather smell this on a man. In fact, I think I'm gonna see what my boyfriend thinks of this one because it does have a fresh, sort of aqua de Gio touch to it. All right, I wanna get like the top notes again. Okay. Okay, so this is so lovely, you guys. This fragrance is actually so lovely. It is fresh, it is green, it is earthy. Definitely get the grapefruit. There, The orange blossom in there is very, very understated. I don't really get a whole lot of orange blossom at all. More woody in the dry down. Very fresh, very green, lots of bergamot. 
it's really, really, really nice. And the longevity with this, especially in clothing, is crazy, you guys. I actually sprayed it on my pajama top like five days ago and I can still smell it on that pajama top. At first, when you first spray it, it's it's very fresh and very green. Then it becomes like sort of something you could see being unisex. It starts to become like almost like a Jo Malone in nature, um, sort of a unisex Jo Malone fragrance that both men and women could wear, something like Blackberry and Bay or Wood Sage and Sea Salt, something like that. It starts to kind of change into something like that. So if you like Jo Malone fragrances, this is definitely one to check out because it does have that airy green quality to it. And then as it starts to dry down, it becomes a little bit more sort of woody, a little bit more woody, and a little bit more mossy. And at that point for me, it's very masculine again. So it has like a masculine opening, a very unisex middle, and then toward the end, it becomes very masculine again. And to me, when I smell my pajama top, it smells to me like my boyfriend must have been sitting beside me and I was rubbing up against him or something. Um, absolutely gorgeous, perfect for spring, perfect for summer, amazing longevity. I would say that the projection is true to the personal scent space. Really, really nice. Not my cup of tea because it does lean too masculine for me. It's not something I would wear, but I would like this on my boyfriend. If you're looking for something to buy any man in your life and they're looking for something fresh and kind of unique and not like your everyday designer scent, this is definitely a nice one to check out. So that is Commodity Moss. So the next one, you guys, is in this really beautiful packaging. It, how beautiful is this? I just love the contrast of the bottle against the light background. This is absolutely stunning. And this was sent to me complimentary from M. Mikalev, and this is Eden Falls. So this is a marketed toward unisex fragrance, so for men or women, and this is one of their newer releases, and it is also touted as being a vanilla citrus scent. So actually, you guys, when I looked at the notes, I thought that this would smell completely different than what it does. It really does not smell to me like what the notes say. It smells a lot more masculine than what the notes look like and it smells a lot more aquatic and a lot more woody and green than what the notes look like. So let me just take the cap off. This is a very interesting cap. It has like this pebbled grainy look on the top, very heavy duty. And then of course it has the really interesting like speckled bottle. I love Mikalef's bottles because they do put so much time and effort and such beautiful handmade craft craftsmanship into all of their bottles. My two favorite perfumes from Mikalef still remain Ylang and Gold and Note Vini. Those are my two favorite Mikala fragrances so far. This one is really, really nice. I wouldn't buy it for myself because it's just not, it's just not something that I want, if I would have smelt it in a store, I would have immediately wanted to buy it, but it is really, really nice. So the notes that you have in this fragrance are pink pepper, bergamot, and tangerine. In the middle, you have coriander, jasmine, and neroli. And in the base, you have milk, mousse, vanilla, musk, and patchouli. So what does this remind me of? So this one is kind of hard to describe actually and I think that is a nod to how beautifully blended all of these notes are. I don't really get one thing over the other things. They're, it's all so nicely blended. I definitely do get that coriander though. It is a little bit spicy. I think the jasmine and the neroli must be what is making it smell a little bit sort of like summertime aquatic. I'm very surprised that there's no mineral notes or anything listed in here. This is actually reminding me of another fragrance and I cannot put my finger on what it smells like. Very woody, very aquatic, a little bit fresh. Honestly, I don't really smell the milk mousse a whole lot. I definitely get the patchouli. I don't get any vanilla. This is, it's a really beautiful scent. I think I would rather smell this on a man than a woman. It's very sort of ethereal, very airy and very unique and very pretty. Not particularly sexy, just very airy, very sort of clean, but it does have this, it does have this sort of uh, creamy nature to it, this creamy, warm nature to it as well in the background. So to me, it smells just like the bottle looks. It smells very blue, very aquatic, very, very airy. And yeah, I'm really surprised that they don't list like any sort of mineral notes or anything like that, because to me, that's what this smells like. Very like mineralic. Definitely. If you think of like a waterfall, like the advertising for this and waterfalls. And to me, that's really what it gives me. Let me just look and see what other people are comparing it to, because it's reminding me of something. 
Greedior? Mm, I wouldn't have said Greedior. It's very pretty, very natural, very sort of aquatic. Yeah, definitely aromatic. It is a really nice scent. Not 100% my cup of tea, a little bit masculine. I think if you're looking for something unique and if you're looking for something that is a little bit different and a little bit fresher, this would be a really nice one to check out. For. So the next one is a fragrance that I've had sitting in my closet for quite a while. This was sent to me a long time ago and I just never got around to doing a video about it. So I do apologize for that. This was sent to me directly from the company um, Al Haramain and this is their Orientica line. So Al Haramain does a lot of Middle Eastern styled fragrances and let me tell you guys, they do an incredible, incredible job. So this is their Amber Rouge. First of all, how how exquisite is this bottle very luxurious looking and this one you guys is a straight-up dupe for Baccarat Rouge Extrait de Parfum I think some people compare this more to the original Baccarat but for me this is definitely more of a dupe for the Baccarat Rouge Extrait de Parfum even though it's not listed in the notes um, I don't see any bitter almond listed in here actually the notes that are in here are the same as the notes that are in Baccarat Rouge I do believe but for me this one definitely comes across a little bit more extrait from Baccarat it's not quite as airy and vibrant and luminous as Baccarat Rouge's. So the notes that you have in here are saffron, jasmine, amberwood, ambergris, cedar, and fir resin. And you guys, this will last forever and it projects and it fills a room. So if you're looking for a Baccarat Rouge dupe, you wanna smell just as good as Baccarat, but you don't wanna pay the price, and you also want this to last forever, and you want to be able to smell it on yourself, this is a good one because Baccarat Rouge does play a bit of a disappearing act. It kind of is there and then it goes away and then it comes back. This one you can just smell on yourself continuously. It never really does go away. So if that was a problem for you with Baccarat, then this one might be one to check out. Yeah, it smells exactly like Baccarat Rouge straight to parfum in my opinion so very sweet very burnt sugar I definitely get a little bit of a burnt almond or a bitter, bitter almond kind of a touch even though it's not listed in the notes it's a really amazing scent it's really really beautiful definitely one to check out if you're looking for a Baccarat dupe that lasts forever and is a fraction of the price the next one is another one from Al Haramain's Orientica line and this is called Oud Saffron and you guys this one is a dupe for Lancome's Oud Bouquet it smells also very similar to Shoggoth Oud it smells very similar to Maison Francis Kirk John's Oud Satin Mood if you like any of those Oud fragrances or you're looking for something very Middle Eastern, very oody, very sensual, extremely long lasting, amazing performance. Definitely check this out. You will not be disappointed. Um, yeah, it's pretty incredible. The only reason I don't wear it and it's been sitting in my closet for like the last eight months or whatever is because as you guys know, I have a really hard time with oud fragrances and I still have not found an oud that for me is like wearable. It's just my personal preference. I couldn't do Oud Bouquet, I couldn't do Shoggoth Oud. Um, Oud Satin Mood is beautiful and I'd like to revisit it. So the notes that you have in here are Oriental Notes, Vanilla, Saffron, Patchouli, Guayac Wood, Oud or Agar Wood, and Musk. Let me just take the cap off. As much as I have a hard time wearing Oud fragrances, I truly love, 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 love the smell of these perfumes, you guys. Wow, is that incredible. I mean, it's incredible, it's incredible. It's really good. It's really good. It smells opulent. It smells rich. It smells sophisticated. Uh, would I like this on a man? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. If my boyfriend wore this on a date or an evening out, forget about it. Like, this is incredible. This smells so good. Um, same thing, though, with, you know, Oud Bouquet, Shoggoth Oud. This one has a pretty heavy dose of vanilla as well. The base notes are woody notes and musk, but honestly, you get the vanilla throughout, and... It just smells incredible, you guys. Like, I really need to start wearing these. I really need to start wearing these perfumes because, wow. So this is definitely one to check out if you're an Oud person. I think that YouTube made um, Lancome Oud Bouquet super popular. Everybody was talking about Oud Bouquet, Oud Bouquet. Every, you had to have it. It was like on every perfume reviewer's top list except mine because I never could do it. <laughs> um, but honestly, forget about Oud Bouquet. Like, check out Orientica Oud, Ori Orientica Oud Saffron. Check them out, you guys. Fraction of the price, way more affordable, last forever, still a high quality fragrance. It's not like these are cheap, cheap, you know, they're, they're going to run you the same amount as like a designer perfume, but they're so good. Like honestly, 
so good. And lastly, we have another one sent to me from Orientica, and this is called Royal Amber, again with the beautiful um, craftsmanship on the bottles, really, really incredible. And this one, you guys, reminds me of Zerzhov's Herba Pira, and it also reminds me of a lot of the Tiziana Terenzi perfumes I've smelled. And I say that because I feel that the Tiziana Terenzis all have a similar underlying component to them, um, and a lot of them remind me of Herba Pira, even the ones that aren't meant to smell like Herba Pira. A lot of the Tiziana Terenzis have that very distinct underlying Tiziana DNA, and this has that. So if you were looking for a Tiziana Terenzi perfume or a Zerzhov perfume dupe that makes you smell expensive, incredible, fruity, um, good for the summertime, very fresh, lasts forever, like longevity with the Orientica perfumes, you guys, is a non-issue. They last forever. Worth checking out. Do not spend hundreds of dollars on Herba Pura. Do not spend hundreds of dollars on Tiziana. Check out Orientica. So this one here, this one has notes of bergamot, green notes, amber, melon, pineapple, sweet notes, woody notes, musk, and vanilla. It's pretty incredible, it is. So again, this is not really my cup of tea, although never say never because my perfume tastes have been changing and evolving a lot over the last six months, like I mean a lot. And I could very well put this on one day and love it. At the moment, I still don't absolutely love this. I'm not sure what it is. Again, it smells very similar to Zerzhov Herba Pira. It smells a lot like Kirke from Tiziana Terenzi. I would say those are the two perfumes this one reminds me the most of. Also, if you've ever tried the Amber Oud Gold, which I think was pretty popular for a while, that one is also from Al Haramain. It smells very similar to Amber Oud Gold. This is basically a fruity summer scent that is bold and also very deep and very woody and lasts forever. Ridiculous amount of time. Projects will get you compliments, smells expensive, extremely expensive. Um, yeah, it's very good. Definitely worth checking out, you guys. Like I said, do not waste your, like if it was me, if I loved this scent profile, I would not be spending the hundreds of dollars on Zerzhov. I would just get this one um, because it smells so similar. So yeah, pretty incredible. The whole, um, the whole Orientica line is amazing. I actually wonder if there's any more in this line because I think they'd be worth checking out. But there's the next one is another one that was sent to me complimentary from M. Mikolev, and this is Secrets of Love Spiritual. So first of all, look at the bottles, you guys. They just put so much effort and craftsmanship into their bottles. If if true artistry is something that is valuable to you as a consumer, as a fragrance lover, Mikolaf is a house you have to check out because they just have, they go above and beyond in terms of their, their bottle designs, their artistry, the work that goes into them, the scents themselves. They're so beautifully blended and they're so unique and pretty and they're just amazing. And also the packaging that you get with the Mikolaf perfumes literally looks like a perfectly wrapped Christmas gift every single time. So this one is called Spirits, or Secrets of Love Spiritual. This is gorgeous, you guys. This is absolutely beautiful. Let me just take the cap off here. Ooh, that cap is very, very heavy. Like you could throw this at something and break it if you wanted to. <laughs> throw it at somebody. So the notes that you have in here are bergamot and pink pepper in the opening. So you do have a very fresh sort of pink peppery, little bit spicy opening. In the middle you have jasmine and cedar, lots of beautiful feminine jasmine. And in the base you have ambergris, benzoin, and vanilla. So this is floral, it's very vanilla-y, it's very ambery, and again, this one people compare to Herba Pura from Zerzhov. I will say that I prefer the opening of this perfume a lot more than the dry down. In the dry down, I do get a lot of the ambergris, and it's almost like too much ambergris for me. Herba Pura is not one of my favorite perfumes, and in the dry down, this definitely does resemble Herba Pura and Kirke. Again, if you're looking for something similar to those fragrances but different, this is a good one to check out because it also has this really pretty feminine twist of this jasmine, and it doesn't have any of those like fruity melon notes. So if Herba Pura was too fruity for you to Melanie to like sweet fruity note this one is definitely one to check out I'm actually gonna spray it on paper because I want to see the opening of this again okay I wanted to smell the opening because oh gosh it's so pretty <laughs> it's so good oh my gosh it's so good you guys the opening of this fragrance is stunning it is fresh it's floral it's oh my god it's so pretty 
Mm, so nice. It's so, oh my gosh, you guys. Like, this is amazing. This is what happens to me almost every time I smell one of the women's fragrances from Mikalev. They're just so captivating and so beautiful. It does start to smell like Herba Pura and Kirke, yes, but not to the same extent. Like, in fact, I wouldn't have made that comparison. It was only after looking at reviews that I was like, okay, yeah, I do see the difference. It, to me, this one, it doesn't smell like that Al Haramein Amber Oud Gold or anything. It's very, very different. It's fresh, it's floral, it's, it does almost smell a little bit fruity. Beautiful for the summertime. And then you get this really gorgeous dose of like vanilla and benzoin. I think what happens for me though with this perfume is somewhere in the dry down, it does become a little too ambery for me. It can be a little headachey for me. Sometimes ambergris gives me a headache. I can't always do ambergris. That's again, that's not the perfume's fault. I am probably the worst person to review perfumes because I'm very prone to headaches. <laughs> so a lot of perfumes start to be too much for me. But wow, is it ever pretty. I just love the opening of this fragrance. The next one is from Raja. Actually, the final two are both from Raja. So thank you to Raja for sending me these fragrances. So this one is Enigma, and I wanted to show you the beautiful bedding or the beautiful packaging that it comes in. It does look like a plush satin bedding, doesn't it? It look, just looks so nice. Um, and then the bottle comes out like so. And you have the stunning bottle, really, really incredible. So this is Enigma Pour Femme, and this is from the Essence Pour Femme line. So they do have another version of the Enigma. So this is a beautiful fragrance for women, obviously. This is a powdery vanilla rose scent. This has notes of bergamot, may rose, peach, geranium, ylang-ylang, heliotrope, neroli, jasmine, musk, vanilla, sandalwood, patchouli, ambergris, and orris. So let me just take the cap off here. Raja is one of the most luxurious perfume houses out there. Very well known and makes some really incredible fragrances. I have to say so far my two favorite from Raja are the Reckless and also the 51. Reckless and 51 are my two top, top recommendations from Raja from the Essence Pour Femme line if you're looking for something. This is beautiful too though. So let me tell you what this smells like. Okay, so this fragrance, what can I even say about Enigma? <laughs> These fragrances from this line are all beautiful. Like I said, 51 is probably the one that was the most wow factor for me. I did gift that to a fellow friend here on YouTube. And you know what? Sometimes, as much as I'm happy to gift things, <laughs> sometimes I miss that fragrance because it was so stunning. 51 was my favorite. This one, however, you guys, is kind of a close second, I would say, in terms of how it smells. It's similar to 51 but it's not quite as sweet and it's not quite as sexy where 51 is something i would have worn on a date this one is not something i would wear on a date this is more of an everyday appropriate beautiful signature scent kind of a fragrance it's absolutely stunning you guys it is so pretty the notes are very very well blended again it does have that peach and that geranium which peach and geranium don't always sit well with me um, but in here it's a little bit more doable because it is so nicely blended lots of rose in here lots of musk definitely a heavy dose of vanilla very fresh very floral very expensive there's something about the raja fragrances that they all just smell so expensive like and it's unique and it's something that not everybody is wearing. If you wanted to smell fresh and feminine and beautiful and expensive and effortless at the same time, this is a very good one to try. And like I said, it's just very, very effortless. It's feminine, it's beautiful, it's effortless. It's not really sweet. It's definitely more of a floral, sort of a peachy, vanilla sandalwood yeah it's just a, it's just a really really beautiful fragrance and it's it's kind of like a breath of fresh air it's so different from anything else i have to say that all of the raja fragrances i've experienced are kind of like that they're all just this beautifully perfectly blended composition of notes amazing so yeah that is the enigma and the last one in today's video is another one from raja and this is danger essence pour femme so this one is one i have had my eye on for quite a while because i've heard some really good things about this one and this is a pretty incredible fragrance you guys it's very deep it's very woody it's very sensual it's alluring it's a really beautiful fragrance so and it's also very long lasting so the notes that you have in here are bergamot grapefruit lemon and mandarin orange in the middle you have may rose ylang ylang violet jasmine, gardenia, and peach. And in the base, you have sandalwood, tonka bean, vanilla, orris, musk, patchouli, and clove. So again, with the beautiful packaging, let me take the cap off here. Okay, 
So this fragrance is really incredible. Straight off the top, it's almost aldehydic. There's no aldehydes listed in the notes, but if you've ever smelled Chanel Number no. 5, you know that very aldehydic, crisp, linen-like, breezy, synthetic-y kind of, not in a bad way, but that quality that you get from Chanel Number no. 5, those aldehydes. It's surprising to me that they're not listed in here because I get those. And it's not the first time I've heard someone compare this to Chanel Number no. 5. It does have a reminiscence of Chanel Number no. 5, if you like Chanel number no. five, you will probably love this. It opens up very fresh, very woody, and very powdery right off the hop. Um, that sort of vanilla tonka bean dry down does not come until after it's completely dried down on your skin. What you're gonna get is more floral. Um, you do get the orris, you do get that powderiness. A little bit fresh, a little bit spicy. There's a touch of spice in there. Very feminine, very sensual, very woody, very deep. This is something I would see for an evening on a very expensive woman. Um, if you were at a black tie event or something in the evening, a formal event, and picture a woman in her 40s, a beautiful woman in her 40s walking into the room in a stunning black ball gown, and all eyes turn and they're on her, and she just looks and smells incredible and also very mysterious. This is what she's wearing. Mm. The dry down is what I love about this perfume. In the dry down, you get less of that sort of Chanel aldehydic touch and you get a lot more of that vanilla and that tonka bean. It becomes much more sensual. Much more sensual, almost a little bit flirty. It's kind of edgy, it's very bold, it's very unique. So this also reminds me a little bit of Parfum de Marly Athalia or Italia, I'm not sure how to say it, I think it's Athalia. That perfume, you guys, is really incredible. This one is kind of like, imagine Chanel number no. five and Athalia met and had a baby. This is their baby named Danger. <laughs> their Danger baby. <laughs> so you have like that freshness and that aldehydic touch and that sort of vintage quality of Chanel and then you have this sort of modern but very mature very mysterious sensual darkness with this wood woodiness and this vanilla that's what you get in danger very very nice again it's not personally my present cup of tea um, I do have to be very honest with you and still tell you that I do prefer Reckless and 51. Those are still my top two favorite from Raja, although I'm really happy to have been able to experience this one. All right, you guys, so that is my huge PR perfume haul. Apologies again to Al Haramain because I know that I should have reviewed these a lot sooner. I've just you know, whatever. I shouldn't make excuses, but these are incredible. Yeah, and so thank you so much to all the companies that have sent these to me. Let me do just a quick recap and tell you which ones were my favorites and which ones I think are the safest blind buys, if there are any. Just as a general rule of thumb, I don't think that there are, there is such a safe thing. As, oh my gosh, I can't talk. I don't think there is such a thing as a safe blind buy because perfume is going to smell different to everybody. Okay, so right off the top, probably the ones that I personally liked the most are actually the... Moleg Cherry Rose. This one is just really beautiful and very pretty and very feminine and very surprising. I was really surprised by that one. And actually, if you want to know what it smells like, just look at the packaging. It smells the way the packaging looks. It smells elegant, pretty, pink, fruity, beautiful. It's a very, very beautiful perfume. Um, and I really like the packaging too. And so that was one of my favorite ones. It's probably the most closest to my personal taste. I also really liked the Commodity Moss, although like I said, I do think that one is a little bit more masculine. And I would like this one on my boyfriend and I'm gonna see what he thinks of it because I think he would really like that one. Very fresh, a little bit masculine, long lasting, good one. I also really loved the Parfums Makeleff Secrets of Love Spirituality, or Spiritual, I think it's called. Um, that one just has such a stunning, stunning opening, you guys. In the dry down, it does become a little closer Closer to Herba Pura, which then is where it kind of loses me because I don't love Herba Pura and I don't love Kirke from Tiziana Transi. But if you like Tiziana Transi Kirke, you'll love it. Um, I don't particularly like the Gutel just because the Gutel to me does smell like a grass shampoo with some peach in it, and I just don't particularly love that. Um, I have to say that the two from Roja are not my favorite. The Enigma smells incredible and very expensive, but personally my scent profile definitely with Roja leans toward the Reckless, which smells similar to Love Don't Be Shy, and also the 51, which is just wow, like wow factor. I actually would like to get that one back at some point. 
And then we have the three from El Jaramain. I really, really like them, you guys. Um, it's no secret. I This Oud Saffron smells phenomenal. It smells so good. Um, if you like Oud Bouquet, Oud Satin Mood, Velvet Rose Nude from Jo Malone, any of those Oudy vanilla scents, it's one to check out. It's chef's kiss. Very, very good. And then you've got your Kirke kind of dupe, and then you've got your Baccarat Rouge dupe, which if you love Baccarat Rouge, definitely one to check out. And I have to be honest, probably my least favorite, I don't think it was unapparent when I was talking about it, my least favorite has to be actually the Eden Falls. It is very nice, but it's just not my cup of tea, and there's something in it that I don't absolutely love. I don't know if it's the milk mousse mixed with the coriander. It's also reminding me a lot of another perfume that I used to have that I cannot remember, and I didn't like that perfume. I think it was must have been a blind buy, but it's really giving me vibes of another fragrance that I used to have that just was not it for me. I'm not sure what it was. It's a very nice fragrance, don't get me wrong, but out of this batch, it is my least liked. So those are all of the fragrances today. If you have tried any of these, please let me know your thoughts down below. If you have any other questions, on the whole, these are all really good quality, pretty long lasting, um, maybe with the exception of the Anique Goutel, that one's a little bit lighter. And yeah, they're all definitely worth um, checking out. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will have everything linked down below. Don't forget, you can save 10% on any niche fragrance that they sell on Twisted Lily with my code. And I'll see you guys all very soon in the next video. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about these perfumes. I'm curious to know if you are intrigued by any of them. Let me know down below which ones sounded the best to you, which ones you are the most curious about checking out. And I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.